things that CMS is really known for in the simulation community is the debriefing with good judgment approach. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm curious to know at what point in the course did debriefing with good judgment sort of become the core of the course as it is now? Was it right from the beginning or was that not until after Jenny was here? Well, it certainly wasn't from the beginning. It came much later. I think when we started out with an instructor course, I would say we didn't really know what it would be. And the work we had did with Dave Gobbin is more in his style of debriefing, which is not the same as what developed in the CMS style. Uh, so I, when we started out with what became the IMS, it was to say, well, we need to train instructors, but nobody really knew what they needed to be trained exactly to do. So having an educational psychologist work with, work with clinicians and put together a program was an experiment. And people were drawing from uh, educational research and, uh, and their experience as educators, uh, Jenny in, included. Uh, but again, she came on a little bit later. When we started out, uh, we didn't have what I'd call debriefing good with, with good John. Frankly, I can't remember how the debriefing, the, the first debriefing uh, teaching started. That would come from Dan. But by the way, when we started IMS, we didn't start with debriefing. We started with the module. We had a research module. We had a leadership module. And then we had a couple of days of actually teaching. And I don't even remember what all the modules were in that. But we had a leadership course for two days we tried out. And we had a research course. So at first, we were trying out lots of modules and things to experiment with what worked, what did people need. Uh, and the debriefing with good judgment came, I'd say, much later. But I, I think it's fair to say it came from Jenny and her organizational behavior thinking and bringing in all kinds of other work, particularly arduous and and her mentor, Bill Torbert. So again, she'll be better to tell that story. So um, at this point, there are some over 3,000 graduates of the IMS course of simulation instructors who've been trained here. Um, you know, and as I listen to this story of collaboration, not competition, of being driven by curiosity and passion, it makes me think that those values that you shared, and, and you, you mentioned David Gaba shared too, have put a stamp on the simulation community worldwide because simulation educators are the most collaborative, curious, mutually supportive group that I've ever been with. So it makes me think that you've really put a stamp on the science of simulation. So we've got 3,000 graduates of CMS out there doing this, sharing these values. I'm curious to know what you think the impact of those 3,000 plus graduates have been on the science of healthcare simulation? Wow, that's a, that's a hard question to answer. I, I, don't, I don't have any empirical data to say what our impact has been. Uh, and I wish I knew, I wish there were a way to measure it, but uh, I, where I get it from is just the energy of people who come to the reception every year. And when I bump into people in all sorts of different places who have been through an IMS, that, that, that's my data. And what I think people have gotten from it is exactly what you're saying. There's something infectious about the IMS instructors. It's the chemistry of the instructor team, the fact that they're passionate as teachers, the fact that they're, they really care about their students, that they listen to their students, they learn from their students, and that they're constantly learning themselves, that they're role models. And I think there's something infectious about that, that, that the people who come through IMS, all the people who participate, not everybody, but most of them get that. And they may not even be sure what they got. They may have learned debriefing with good judgment, which is a way to debrief, but it's a philosophy of life, if you will, of curiosity. And I like to think that a lot of them have gone away with that, and then they infect other people with it. Uh, just learning to be curious, uh, really allowing yourself to care more about people, that you realize it's not about you, your performance. It's really thinking about what your students need and what they can learn, and about being generative and recognizing that they're going to go away and they're going to make a difference and the way that you can leverage your impact on the world to make it a better place 
is by spreading that kind of caring and that passion to other people. Because you can't do it all yourself. And it just multiplies. And I'd like to think of the thousands of people who have been through, they've multiplied that feeling of, uh, of how much it really is about just really caring about making a difference. And if you, I mean, it sounds trite, if you will, but in our own way of making the world a better place, this piece that we can do, because what we do extends beyond simulation. It extends beyond, extends beyond what we just do in healthcare, that we really care about the way the world is, the way people care about other people. And, and, and I think that's the heart and soul of what we're about. And, and you can't make it up. So you were the founding director of the Center for Medical Simulation, and now you are our director emeritus. Yep. And um, CMS continues to carry out your legacy. Um, so as you look back over your career, I wonder what it is that you most hope that you'll be remembered for. Um, you know, people ask about writing on your epitaph and, uh, and that kind of thing. And I, I'm, I don't spend time thinking about that in my life. Um, I kind of live for who I am and what I do. And when I'm gone, I'm gone. So it's like, I don't think about how that particular question uh, but the things that bring me joy and are satisfying to me and, and, um, and, and the way I feel about making a difference, I think would be exactly what I expressed about the way CMS is. It would be uh, about that people would care about other people and that they may feel that they got something from me. You know, my biggest joy these days is being semi-retired. I'm not fully retired, just semi-retired. Uh, is mentoring people. And, and when I, it's funny, I don't think students appreciate when they come back and tell me some story about something they did, uh, that it had probably no idea of how much joy that gives to me to feel that I touched one other person's life. And so it's not even something collective. It's when I talk to somebody and I realize, wow, that person's doing something really neat or they're really happy or they got some joy and I feel like I was a part of giving that to them. Uh, maybe it's a neurosis, I don't know, but that's, that's the thing that's most, most fun for me uh, and I think gives me mo the most of the meaning in my life is those kinds of connections of helping other people become leveraged and doing, other, you know, doing great things. Yeah, it's a human connection. It's, it's interesting because I'm in the patient safety business. And I never had an experience. I mean, I had an experience that I that told in, the, in lectures and everything about how I, one of the other ways I got started with an error that I was involved in that I made that seemed to hurt somebody. But it wasn't like that drove me to patient safety. It wasn't like a family member died. A lot of people get in because they have a, a personal story like that. And that's not what it was about for me. It was just the challenge of making a difference. And the fact that I could have an impact on people's lives and something that was important to them. And I don't want people to be hurt. But it's not like I, I, I don't know a single life that I saved. I mean, I can't tell you a single person's life that I saved. I just don't know. So it's a, it's a frustrating thing in a way. But that's not what my passion was. It wasn't... Uh, that I have to go save lives because I couldn't tell. It was really more about the people I worked with and, and exciting them and inspiring them, turning them on to do good things. That, to me, is where my joy comes from and my passion.